This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. I hope you're hungry for some delicious home-cooked meals because the meal kit service HelloFresh will give you just that. HelloFresh brings seasonal, simple recipes with pre-measured fresh ingredients straight to your door every week. Each recipe is quick and super easy to follow with six-step recipe cards, and all ingredients are packed in a special insulated box for optimum quality. Meals come together in 30 minutes at most, and you'll need no more than two pots or pans, making cooking and cleaning a cinch. And no worries, HelloFresh offers menus for small and large families, and even vegetarians, and you can change any time you want. My wife and I have been subscribed to HelloFresh for the past month, which helped us find a new hobby in cooking up these scrumptious meals, all without needing to shop or even think about it. We even hold on to the recipe cards of our absolute favorite recipes, one of which is Korean bibimbap. I apologize if I mispronounced that horribly, but it's spicy, tangy, and savory, and just awesome. So if you want to say thanks to HelloFresh, or sponsoring this show, and you want to cover your taste buds with easy and delicious weekly meals, you can get $80 off your first month of HelloFresh at hellofresh.com slash DPP80 and using promo code DPP80. That's basically eight free meals at hellofresh.com slash DPP80 using promo code DPP80. Thanks, HelloFresh. Now, ghosts and schools go hand in hand. Everybody in school is already emotional. A spirit who met an untimely and tragic demise would only be a perfect fit. So it's no surprise that hauntings, ghosts, demons at schools across the globe are rather common. And that's all you need, right? Yet another reason to dread going to school. Well, actually, here are five reasons five allegedly real haunted schools and ghostly encounters. If you have a story of your own that you'd like to tell the world, share it with us at darknessprevails.org and I might even narrate it on the show. Screams in the Schoolyard from Outlandish 9000 Location Unknown The school I attended at the time was very old and had a fair bit of incredibly disturbing legends and stories surrounding it. A lot of stories of people passing in mysterious ways, people taking their own lives on the property. For example, when the school was a high school, one girl was severely taunted all day every day. So one day, after being humiliated in front of the whole school, she followed the janitor up to the roof, hid until he was gone, then jumped. I'm still unsure if the story about the girl was true or if it was told just to scare me, but the events that take place in this experience make me lean more towards the fact that this story could be true. This happened a while back, and as I look back on this, I wish I never tried to investigate. I was in grade five, the new kid, but I was also being reunited with my friend from grades one through three. The class we were in when this happened was gym. We were out in the courtyard. We had a free period that day, and me and my friend, let's call her Sasha, were just relaxing by the doors that led to one of the hallways, talking about dumb things. Sasha told me she had to go get a drink, it was really hot that September, and we were sitting directly in the sunlight. I nodded and Sasha walked away. I was alone now, one of the most eerie things you could be in that old schoolyard. I got up after Sasha had been gone quite a while, preparing myself to go down the creepy hallway after her that led to the water fountains. I didn't like that school in general. It gave off an incredibly disturbing vibe even to a happy nine-year-old like me, who shouldn't have been able to identify anything disturbing whatsoever. But this school radiated that feeling. I began to walk away from the door towards the gym teacher to ask to get a drink when Sasha called me. I turned around back towards the door where the voice came from, and I saw no one there. 
I remember thinking that her voice had echoed from somewhere else. I wasn't scared. The reason being we were both prone to pranking each other, so I thought that Sasha was pulling my leg. I called her name, me being the only one in that area at the time, but I got no answer. So I began to look around, all around the area that the voice had come from. I turned towards the door that led to the hallway, and it was ajar slightly. I walked over to it and opened it the rest of the way. After a couple of steps in, the door suddenly slammed shut behind me, and the lighting seemed to grow dim. I called out to Sasha, expecting her to come out from hiding and start laughing at me, but it remained quiet. I went back to the door and exited the building before some teacher came by seeing that I wasn't in class. I shut the door behind me and walked a few feet away when I heard a sound that may not be creepy to you, but to me, it'll be burned into my memory forever. It was the sound of hands slamming against the glass of the window that was on the door, scaring the living daylights out of me. I turned a full 180 to face the door, moving faster than I'd ever moved before, but I saw no one through the glass. Cautiously, I walked back toward the door and peered downwards, looking through the glass. I was looking for anyone that could have caused the noise, but once again seeing no one, I ran like there was a pack of wolves chasing me, never stopping, not until I reached the other end of the courtyard. It was then that I discovered that Sasha had been at the other end of the courtyard the entire time with a friend of ours named Don. I gathered my courage and led them toward the back of the courtyard where I had been earlier, and we waited. That's when we heard the bone-chilling sound of a man on the roof screaming for his life in pain and agony. All of us terrified, we ran and did not move from beside the teacher, who made us feel safer for some reason, until the bell rang. Then we all walked back together to our class that we shared, bunched together like a bunch of trembling sardines until we made it to the classroom. I wish that it ended there, but no, it's just my luck that I might now have something attached to me. Later on in December, we were gathered by the gym doors waiting for the teacher. I was squished right by the basement stairs that had no doors. I was scanning the basement floor when something silver caught my eye. I always had a flashlight on me in school during the winter as the winters in Canada are harsh and the power could go out at any moment. So I pulled out the flashlight from my pocket, then clicked it on. What I saw didn't so much scare me, but it did disturb me a fair bit. There was a pair of scissors there, dripping with red liquid. I called Sasha and Don over and we all glanced around, then began to slip down to the basement together tightly clutching each other's hands. When we breached the depth of the basement, we examined the scissors together. It's pin gel, Don said eventually, right as the bell rang. With a final glance at the scissors, I ran after my friends, but stopped at the start of the stairs as I saw two gleaming white orbs staring at me from the darkness. I let out a yelp of shock then ran as fast as I could into the gym. Many other minor things happen to me these days, seeing silhouettes as I walk home alone in the rain, placing my phone on my desk, walking out for a moment and then it being gone, only to be found on my bed, my lights turning off randomly, my stepsister's balloons going from upstairs to downstairs without anyone touching them. The most notable incident occurred recently, I told my stepsister to go upstairs and get herself a new shirt, as she had spilled milk from her cereal on her old one. She went upstairs, coming down a minute later, looking horrified and running right into my arms. My dad and stepmother were sleeping on the couch as they had worked late the previous night. I asked my stepsister what was wrong, and what she said still chills me to this day. She said, 
The little red girl wants me to play with her, but I don't want to. I'm scared of her. I told her that it was okay and that I would protect her from this little red girl, thinking it was just her imagination. But then we began to hear the sound of a little girl singing, then the drawer squeaking open upstairs. I told them to stay put and I walked upstairs, going into their room and seeing nothing out of the ordinary. I turned and started walking downstairs again to say that it was probably one of the cats hitting the drawers, but then I heard a distorted little girl's voice say rather loudly, She will play with me. I ran downstairs and I stayed with my stepsisters. Another thing worth noting happened the other night. I was getting my shower ready and turned towards my pajamas, putting them in a place where they would not get wet when I came out. I turned back to see that the shower curtain was moving up and down like it was in a strong wind. The running water could not have caused it to shake and move like that. I was scared at first, but then I huffed and said in a rather annoyed tone, Could you just go away? Some people like their curtains to stay still while they're showering. It suddenly stopped, and I laughed away any trace of fear that remained in me, then said, If you're following me, just don't bug me. I like the peace and quiet. I laughed again and got on with my night. Nothing more has happened, so I hope it stays quiet for a little while so that I can have a bit of peace. I don't think it means any harm, but I must say that there may be two of them. One of them isn't so nice. The other one I call the nice one, just enjoys being mischievous. But for the most part, it's quiet. As for the other one, I'm cautious of it. And whenever I sense this other presence, I quickly audibly say, leave me alone or go away. I think it wants to hurt my stepsisters. It can be very difficult to sleep at night when I feel the little red girl in the room with me, watching, possibly waiting to hurt me or my family. America, from Rhiannon. Location, unknown. The middle school I went to wasn't exactly your typical middle school. It had been built in the 40s, and by the time I went to middle school in the early 2000s, it was pretty much a dump. They kept telling us we'd be getting a new school soon, but it wasn't until some rather drastic things happened that they finally followed through on that promise. Not only was the place falling apart, it had a history. There had been eight people perish on the ground since the 40s, five of which were students, one staff member, and two were visitors. All those lives were taken by someone else. There were also two mysterious, unexplained passings that happened my first year. When I came in as a sixth grader, the most recent passing had been a 17-year-old student named America. America was strange, she didn't have any sort of electronics, which wasn't odd in the early 2000s, but it was more than that. She reportedly hated any sort of technology with a burning passion. Apparently, she was always reading something, and she had a thing for old romances, like Wuthering Heights, Pride and Prejudice, the like. She practically lived in the library, and she dressed like a typical hippie, flowing skirts, combat boots, flower crowns in her hair. She'd also been an actress and a singer and had been in the school drama program all of her years in middle school. After she graduated, she continued to come back each year to see the school musical and to say hi to all her old teachers. While she was odd, she was no recluse. When she was in 11th grade, she'd been dating an older guy for a few months and after her passing, Multiple people came forward and said they knew he was physically and emotionally hurting her, as he had apparently done that to his past girlfriends. He had driven her to the musical that day, 
and it was in the parking lot that things went south. Apparently, she got mad at him for something, hitting him on the arm with the book she was carrying. This enraged him, and he took the book from her and used it to end her life, right there in the parking lot. People heard her screaming, and a lot of people either called the cops or tried to pull him off of her, but they were too late. She was gone. Now, first coming into the school, I knew nothing about that. It didn't get widespread media coverage, so I had no idea that I was going to a school where the previous year, there had been something so terrible happen in the parking lot. It was during the first week that I started to notice strange things. I myself, being a book nerd, spent quite a lot of time in the library. Almost every time I came in, I'd see a book, usually an old romance novel on a cafe table that was in the library. The book was only ever on the cafe table, and there would always be the core of a red apple next to it. Every now and then, I'd find a jeweled earring or a silk scarf. At first, I assumed it was the librarian. It eventually started to get annoying, as in order to sit down in the only good spot in the whole library, I'd have to move all that stuff. So I decided to ask her to stop. At this, the librarian seemed confused. She asked me to describe these items. I mentioned the red apple core and she went white and looked like she had seen a ghost, which of course she kind of had. America, she whispered under her breath. As I mentioned before, I didn't know anything about her, so I asked, what? After I pressed her, the librarian told me the story. Then she moved on to telling me about America herself. We all loved her, she said sadly, especially me. Every morning she'd come in here extra early. She always brought an apple, always red, never green or yellow, and would eat it for breakfast. She was something special, that girl. I left the library then, more intrigued than scared. For a while after that, I'd ask anyone and everyone who may have known her or heard of her what she was like. It was interesting to me, a haunted library. Eventually, I moved on, not really thinking much about the story. There were more interesting things going on in my life, but it was one December that I was painfully reminded of it. The whole school was. I was walking down the hallway when I saw a boy slap a girl that I assumed was his girlfriend. He then pushed her against a wall. I booked it. I was not about to get caught in the crossfire of this one. A week later, that same boy's class was in the library. He walked away from the group, but disinterested in the class. Our library was huge for a school the size of ours. You would go to one part and not see someone in another part. So no one saw what happened to him. All they knew was that someone began to scream. His whole class ran to find him but by the time they did, it was too late. The boy was no longer alive, yet no one was quite sure how it happened. The bruises on him almost looked as if he was beaten with a book, but there was no one else in that part of the library, and they found a long black silk scarf next to him that was reportedly ice cold to the touch. Now this is when I started to get scared, I thought the ghost was a benign, harmless little girl who couldn't bear to be separated from her beloved books. Now I wasn't so sure. What kind of benign, sweet little girl would do that to someone with a book? However, I still continued to go to the library, and again, I eventually forgot about the ghost. In February of the same year, we got a new library assistant, a young man in his early 20s. I liked him right away. He'd save books for me if I asked, and he was willing to discuss them after I read them, and he would read most of them too. Let's be honest, it might be a stereotype, but bookworms enjoy hanging out with other bookworms. It wasn't until May that a certain other bookworm struck again. The library assistant, Mr. Sordino, which I was just talking about, was found one morning. He wasn't with us anymore. It appeared that someone had used a book to harm him, 
and it was as if this person knew what they were doing, had seen his schedule, and chose that day to strike. The only day he was alone in the library in the morning. This time, next to him, they found a flower crown. Upon hearing this, the first thing I did was run to the public library and ask to view newspapers. After about an hour of determined searching, I found a small blurb from a few years prior about a young man who had been accused of hurting his girlfriend, but was acquitted. It was Mr. Sordino. The school district couldn't ignore our pleas to start anew anymore. They knocked the school down the summer after I was in sixth grade and sent us all to different schools. I moved in eighth grade, so I suppose I'll never know if America moved to the new school or if she's at peace now. All I know is that I'm absolutely, positively, never going to be able to look at a library the same way again. My Bathroom Ghost Experience From Tai Chia Location Unknown I was new in grade three in middle school. I had to move to this school as my other schools had issues that I can't mention here. My grade three experience was fun there as I met a lot of new friends, but I remember one time, one ghastly rumor about the toilets near the school bike shed spread like wildfire. It was a story about a young girl who took her own life in the bathroom, so they had to shut it down. I decided to ride my bike the next day just to see what was happening. The following day, I woke up and put on my uniform, but I felt uneasy about all of this. Grow up, Ty, I said to myself, as I got on my bike and wished my father farewell. As I arrived at school, I saw the bike shed. I ran over to it, but I felt something push me. I staggered back and fell into my bike. It definitely hurt. I looked around, but I knew nobody was there because I arrived at school very early. I had no idea how that happened. I got back up and walked to the bike shed. This time, that feeling of being pushed did not happen again. This only made me more suspicious. I walked my bike over and locked it in, but I felt an uneasy presence next to me, next to where the toilets were. I decided to do an utterly stupid thing and looked through the keyhole there. I didn't think I'd see anything but I saw something that I'll never forget. Inside, there was a younger girl, pale-faced and all, and she was staring back at me as if she had been waiting for someone to stare in. I ran as far as I could away from that place, abandoning my bike. At 7.45 a.m., I had curled myself up until my teachers or friends arrived. Miss Lilica found me. She was one of the teachers. She asked what was wrong as she had found me crying, but as I told her everything, her face went white. You didn't see anything else, did you? Miss Lilica's sweet voice turned into a voice of horror. I replied, J just, just the girl. She stared at me and went inside of the classroom. An announcement came on when everyone was inside. From this day forward, no one is to approach the bike shed. If you have a bike, please retrieve it now, as you will no longer have a chance to do so after today. Thank you. The person whoever did the announcements that day seemed extremely serious. I ran to the bike shed, along with a few other kids, of course. We grabbed our bikes or scooters, but one kid didn't. I think his name was Keegan. He tried to get his bike, but he said... I don't feel very good. One of the grade six girls ran over to him to check on him, but the moment he looked at her, she stumbled back and screamed. I saw it too. The whites of his eyes were completely red, as if his veins had busted. Everyone, including me, ran, holding our bikes. The school nurse came and took the boy, Keegan, away. I managed to survive that school and I'm in high school now, but it just goes to show you, don't let your curiosity get the better of you. 
or you might just regret it. My Haunted Elementary School from Sammy. Location, Utah. I live in Utah, and as people here know, the weather can be very bipolar. For example, during the spring, at the start of the day, it can be snowing and freezing, but at the end of the day, it can feel like you live in the desert. Well, in this story, I was in sixth grade. I was in the student council for my school, and we had to have a meeting for what we were going to do with this week's spirit week. As the meeting drew to an end, we soon realized that there was a snowstorm going on, and it was impossible to get out of, so we had to wait at the school to get picked up because of the storm. As most of us usually did, we went off with our best friends in the student council, mine being Nalia. Nalia and I wanted to walk around the school saying hi to our old teachers. It was our last year at the school, and we wanted to see our teachers one last time before we left. We were walking to our kindergarten teacher's classroom first to go say hi, as we had the same class almost every year. But when we got there, our teacher wasn't there. I said to Nalia, I think we missed her, just barely. We were leaving the classroom when all of a sudden we heard something. We turned and looked. Ah, she's probably playing a prank on us, Nalia said. We turned to leave again, but the door closed. I begin to think that this is an awfully elaborate prank for her. Nalia goes to the door to try to open it, but she can't turn the handle. Even when they're locked, they have a little give, but this thing was solid. Not to mention the doors always opened from the inside. She looked at me and told me that it wouldn't budge. I looked at her and said, nice try. But as I tried to open the door myself, she was right. It wouldn't move at all. I was thinking what in the world was going on. I began to try harder, shaking the entire door. I turned to Nalia and say, maybe the weather got to it. We're stuck in here until the storm lets up, I guess. Right after I said that, I kid you not, the power went out. We looked out the window to see if anyone was there, but I was more horrified at what I saw. Not only was there no one around to help us, but all the other classrooms had their power functioning as normal. The power had only gone off in this room. How is that possible, Nalia said. We need to find a way out soon. I look at her. Then everything goes black. I wake up about half an hour later. I'm lying on the ground and I see Nalia huddled up in a corner, crying and shaking. Feeling woozy, I pick myself up and ask her what's wrong. But all she is saying as tears roll down her face is, how can someone do that to their child? What are you talking about, Nalia? She replied, they threw me outside. They left me in the cold. It was a night just like this. They threw me into the cold. They said I was the worst mistake they ever made. I was so confused. I asked her what she meant. Slowly, she lifted her head, and I realized that the girl I was talking to was not Nalia. It was a girl our age, but something was off about her. Her skin wasn't right. It was a pale blue. Her clothes looked like they were in a shower with her. The lashes around her eyes were covered in ice. As I backed away from the creepy looking girl, everything went black again. This time when I woke up, I saw the actual Nalia shaking me and crying, telling me to wake up, please wake up. What happened? I asked. She hugged me, saying, please don't do that to her again. She began to tell me that after I blacked out, she freaked out, that she saw something at the window. There was ice forming in the glass. Then she said she heard someone say, I need him. Suddenly, the lights turned on and the door flew open as we lay there. Together, we ran out of the room as fast as we could. We didn't look back. 
We're still in that school, and I hope I never have to experience anything like this again. This place is not normal. Boarding School Ghost from The Badger. Location, England. The story took place nearly 25 years ago. I was 11 at the time. I was at a prominent boarding school in the southwest of England. At that age, I was just starting to get interested in the ideas of the paranormal and was sure that my school was haunted. But until then, I'd had no experiences myself. It happened one night during the summer term. I got up to go to the loo. It was about three o'clock in the morning. It was a very clear night and the moon was bright, so it was easy to find my way through the long corridors to the loo without a torch. On the way back to my dormitory, I noticed how cold it was, but I didn't want to run and hurry because I didn't want to wake anyone up. My dormitory was halfway down a corridor with a matron's flat next door and another larger dormitory at the far end. There was a bookcase next to the door to that dorm and a couple of windows along one wall of the corridor letting in the bright moonlight. I came around the corner at the top of the corridor and paused at the top of the steps leading down towards my dorm. I could then clearly see in the moonlight a boy standing next to the bookcase. He was wearing pajamas and slippers with a dressing gown, and even though he was clearly looking back at me, I couldn't see his face. A bolt of fear flowed through my spine, and my face went cold. Who are you? I stammered. Without a word, he vanished into thin air. He didn't walk away, he just disappeared. I was rooted to that spot for a moment as I tried to process what I'd witnessed. Then I broke myself from my thoughts and scurried back to bed, not sleeping for the rest of the night. A couple of years later, having not thought about it for some time, it was brought back to the forefront of my mind when I heard that just after WW2, a boy had been taken to the hospital with pneumonia and passed away a few days later. Was it him that night? I might never know, but I've been looking for more evidence of the paranormal ever since. Your best bet would just to be lay low and get your schoolwork done and over with. Graduate as soon as possible, because the sooner you escape the ghosts and hauntings, the sooner you can live a normal life and not a nightmare. Good night. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. If you want to support the show, you can do so at teespring.com slash store slash darkness prevails by buying our merchandise, or just click the shop button below this video if you're watching on YouTube, or donate any amount at patreon.com slash darkness prevails. Thank you. Now, as usual, here are my five favorite early comments from the previous video about 10 mysterious creatures seen while hiking. Maurice Fuqua says, scary stories will make you love nightmares. You've got that right. Ever since I heard my first when I was younger, I could never stop. And here I am now. Banana Mukbang says, shaking my head. That's just me after dropping and losing my toilet paper. The screams of frustration of having no flashlight. You had me at dropping the toilet paper. That's a scary story that's probably too horrifying for my channel. Ugh, I'm getting chills now. Jesse Begill says, Did you get your old outro from a show on Netflix? I have no idea what you mean, but I'm just gonna say Netflix ripped me off. Oh yeah. Space Pirate says, I absolutely love cryptids. I agree, and I wish they offered a bunch of plushies and a collection of cryptid-style monsters. I'm sorry, but I would cuddle those so hard. And Star Knight Division says, Darkness Prevails needs to host meme review to stop T-Series. Yeah, let's do that. I'm definitely not a double agent who's working for T-Series at all. You're definitely not onto me. Well, that brings us to the end of this Darkness Prevails episode. But don't you worry, because more scary stories are on the way. So stay tuned. Until next time, here are the credits to my amazing patrons who continue to donate and support my channel. Thank you all. Remember, stay safe out there. And stay creepy, because this world 
is a strange one.